Hello, everyone. It's great to have you guys here today. So today we're going to have a question from Ralik, Ralikas, who uh, asks, what kind of storage setup did you use for your stock? Did you keep them in boxes you received them in, or did you put them into the outbound boxes so that you could slap a label and send it or something intermediary? Did you get a bunch of those free boxes from priority shipping? Um, so I could have sworn I already answered this question. Um, still, if I answered the same question 20 times, I'd probably end up answering it in like 20 different ways um, and explaining it in, or in explaining it in like 20 different formats, um, using different examples or showing different perspectives. First, I apologize if I've already answered this question and just forgot. Um, I used a safe to answer your first question um, about my storage setup. Inside the safe, everything was separated with either dividers or like sorted in plastic bags. This was done mainly to ensure that my product or the stock was well organized and I could tell when I would need to restock ahead of time. It also helped separate things like pure MDMA and, you know, powdered cocaine. Um, I didn't keep the boxes that they were in. As soon as I received something from another vendor, I would shred it, black out the shipping label or burn it. Um, I did this for two reasons. The first was to ensure that, you know, my own safety, but I didn't want documentation hanging around about where my different products came from or how often I got something in the mail from a particular country or region of the United States or a foreign country. So the main motive was my own security. The secondary motive was the security of the individual that I was purchasing from. If that vendor was careless or made a mistake, I didn't want to have an empty box, for example, that had his fingerprints on the inside of that box. Uh, in a prior video, I talked about how easy it was for the federal government or how easy it is for the federal government to create and put conspiracy charges on people. Another reason for me ensuring that I kept as little evidence around as possible was my own security. Um, I had a, if I had like a package um, with another vendor's fingerprints who had already been arrested or caught and I was, you know, raided and the feds were smart enough to check for that, I could have faced an additional conspiracy charge. Um, it sounds far-fetched, but this is how the federal government operates. And of course, this is a bit over the top, but for how they actually are, uh, well, it's a bit oh, like for who and how they are, um, they're not that intelligent when it comes down to it. If someone had told the feds I had boxes from other vendors they might have fingerprinted them in that case, but otherwise um, it's not even something that they thought of. They didn't take them. They have to be told much of the things in order to figure them out in the first place. The people who work for the feds, be it the DEA, Department of Homeland Security, FBI, ATF, are made up of just people. These people are government employees and typically they're not the most ambitious or intelligent individuals. Um, they did take uh, a package from Spain that um, cleared customs out of my mail and opened it. Uh, they said that at first it had heroin or opium um, when they did the first test on it. Then after a second test was requested, it came back as THC or hash. I mean, this is the level of intelligence that, you know, you're dealing with when you're discussing feds. Um, as I said, they're not that bright. I can tell you in my case, I way overestimated them and their intelligence uh, and their abilities. I also overestimated the motivational factor of money, uh, specifically in regards to my cousin. Um, I think that is because of everything we hear on the news and the propaganda that comes on the TV. The feds, by and large, are about as intelligent as your average uh, street cop. Um, how many people do you think, you know, get away with speeding on a daily basis in this country? Now, imagine if the cop had to point his laser 
strictly at the license plate of each car to know that their speed, you know, how many less people would there be who actually got tickets? Now imagine he had to do this for exactly three seconds. Even still, fewer people would get tickets because of the level of, you know, complication the cop would have in trying to catch people speeding. On the dark net, the blanket security of complication and encryption, you know, coupled with additional layers of security is an insulation that protects an individual. It's like the speeder that has an app on their phone that tells you, you know, where the cops are, a license plate cover that doesn't allow the, you know, bouncing of the laser and a laser and radar detector. You know, they're far more likely to succeed as an individual speeder because of their precautions. Um, I did have a ton of these, you know, free boxes that USPS gives away for priority shipping uh, in my packaging room. Inside of that room, uh, I cleaned regularly using a mixture of bleach and water to ensure that, you know, no skin cells were present or, you know, rather as little DNA was around as possible. You know, little known fact, uh, I know it sounds really weird, but at the end of the day, household dust typically is comprised of like 20 to 50 percent human skin uh because of this you know having a clean room is absolutely essential uh, especially if you're going to be shipping stuff out you know on a regular basis another reason i had a ton of priority shipping boxes was that according to the united states posters inspector uh inspector's manual they can classify a package shipped in anything but their official packaging as suspicious um one thing you want to make sure of uh is that you know you don't order these free boxes on the united states postal services website and have them sent you know to you directly um you know if you're doing anything nefarious uh you would be much better off having whoever you know is going to the post office for you pick up two to five empty boxes you know for every post office that they go to um, doing it like this would ensure that the United States Postal Service doesn't see, you know, hundreds of empty boxes <laughs> being sent to your home address. Um, you know, never a good thing if, you know, you're doing something like that. Um, that said, there's nothing illegal about having hundreds of empty boxes sent to your home. Um, as a matter of fact, the United States Postal Service, uh, their website actually has... Um, a section in it called, you know, free shipping supplies. Uh, this section has like a, a ton of stuff, but it has stuff like boxes, uh, like the ones we're talking about. Um, it also has things like envelopes with bubble wrap inside of them. They're really good if you're actually like you know, moving. You're too cheap to buy, you know, bubble wrap. Um, for things like, you know, some wrap up all your glasses. You know, if that's something you really, you know, you're really determined not to spend money on it. Um, it's, you know, also, you know, you'd order a bunch of their biggest boxes for moving out of the house. Um, I contemplated that when I moved out, but I didn't end up, you know, doing it because I was on supervised release, having just been raided uh, as a darknet vendor in Vermont, you know, probably would have been the wisest thing to, you know, have a hundred empty boxes sent directly to my house from the United States Postal Service. Um, in any case... I, I hope that answers your question. Uh, make sure you hit that like button if you like this content and you want to promote it to others. And if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.